Hi, and welcome to the third episode of the Dub Vlog. I can't believe that I'm almost putting one a week of this. I started doing this in the Finnish winter, and that's the challenge because I don't only get filmed with some light during the weekends when I'm out with the dog. The Finnish winter is so dark. It's dark when we take him in the morning and after work. And when we take him again after work, it's already dark. And of course, when we are out with him in the evening, or just before going to sleep, it's obviously dark. That's about to change. So today, I want to talk about that overkill is underrated. If you're familiar with Skippy or Craig Allensons, Expeditionary Force, you might be familiar with the term, but I'll walk you through an example from the short film that we're about to shoot. Next Tuesday is the very first filming day, and yesterday I was putting together and testing the gear that I'm going to be using. This is how it looks like, and I've been told that this is definitely an overkill. This short film is made with some friends from work for an event at work, and sure, we're trying to put an effort to making it well, but some people might think I'm taking it a little bit too far. So the setup as it is, it starts from the camera, there's a Sony a7 III, then I'm going to be using two lenses, Tamron 28-75 f2.8, and the Sony's eyes 16-35 f4. With that I'm going to have all the range cover that I might need. Then the gimbal, that's the dual handle Feutech A1000, which is probably one of the lightest ones of the gimbals that can handle this kind of payload. I still it starts to add a little bit of bulk. Then the next thing is the monitor slice recorder. So instead of recording internally in the A7 III, I'll record it into the Atomos Ninja 5. And finally there's the external microphone. All in all, this setup, it weighs about... I have to weigh it, I'm gonna put it here down below. And even if it looks a bit of an overkill, let me tell you why it isn't. For those of you that don't know about this short film, it's something we do twice a year for our Peter Ward event. I'm gonna put links below or cards above on the previous one and the video where I explain why actually we do this. And it's a very cool thing. Whoop. How was the running shutter there? It pains me to admit that the camera conspiracy sky might be right. And the field of view of this DJI Osmo Pocket is a little bit in a row. Because when I have my hand extended, it starts to hurt a little bit. So, why a gimbal? In the past, we've done it either handheld, where everything has been super shaky, or on top of tripods, where everything is really boring. So a gimbal gives me the ability to at least move around smoothly, so everything is going to look better. But additionally, I don't need to mess with tripods and find proper angles. I just grab the gimbal and then I place it wherever I want, whenever I want. It's a lot easier to move around than if I wouldn't have it. So I don't think it's an overkill, actually simplifying the work a lot. Next up is the recorder. I had a couple of monitors in the past that I could not really use with the A7 III because I rely on the phase autofocus a lot and I'm shooting in 4K and as you may know, in 4K the phase autofocus does not work if you're recording internally and outputting into HDMI. However, if you're recording only externally, like I'm gonna be doing with the Atomos Ninja 5, then I do get the face tracking. So that's the first benefit. I get a monitor so I can frame better. That means less work in post of reframing and cropping. And second, I'm recording in a very different medium. And it looks like an overkill. And let me explain why it isn't. The Atomos Ninja 5 records into SSD drives, which granted, they are bigger than SD cards, but they bring a lot of benefits. The first one is the price. A fast SD card of about 128 gigabytes is gonna cost you more than 200 euros. And compare that to a one terabyte SSD which actually will have double amount of speed and that's going to be cheaper than the SD card. Eight times the capacity, double the speed, 80% of the price. Sure, I know that the H264 from the A7 III will make a lot smaller files, 
than the DNH HQ that I'm going to be using in the Atomos. But still, you're getting more recording time in that one terabyte SSD than you would in those SD cards. And the next advantage of that is that I don't need to dump files anywhere. I can edit straight. I can edit straight from the SSD. That makes it faster. It makes it easier. And therefore, the overkill was totally justified. Next, we have the microphone. And here the overkill will be for safety. I'm gonna be using the DTV3 Pro mounted on top of the gimbal, also plugged into the A7 III. And for all of the scenes that I'm gonna have close-ups, that's gonna provide most likely good enough audio. And at the very least, I'm gonna have some decent scratch audio if something else fails. The second part of the overkill is that I'm gonna be using some external recorder, hopefully closer to the talent, to have a second source of audio. In the last period of movie, it was called Just Waiting for Friday, we had some audio issues, including me forgetting to turn on the external recorder a couple of times, so we had to rely onto the camera audio. That's why I wanted to put an effort on it, so if everything else fails, at least I'm gonna have that one to rely on. So all in all, this setup, that initially might look like an overkill for a bit of a silly movie that we're doing with some friends, has no transcendence. Most of the features that initially look like an overkill, actually they aren't, and they're gonna save me time and potentially some money. So it's all worth it. There's still another benefit of recording into the SSDs using the Atomos, and that's the codex that the Atomos is using. So the SM3 we're recording 420 8-bit and using 8264 as a codec. And the Atomos I can record in 422 8-bit only because of the 87. 87? Because of the A7 does not output 10-bit, but still. And it can record in ProRes or DNH HD slash DNH HQ. Because I'm a Windows user, the Avid codec is a little bit more friendly. So I'll be recording in DNH HQ. And I have not decided yet if I'm gonna shoot in the SQ flavor of it or normal DNA GSQ. I have the feeling that I'm gonna save some space with the SQ. Still have a higher bit rate than with internal recording in the A7 III. So this should be a pretty good compromise for me. The point is that these codecs are a lot more editor friendly. They're less taxing in the computer. So now what I get is straight from the Atomos, plug the SSD in, no need to transfer anything. Edit directly, edit easily, and edit more faster. I only see benefits here. So as you can see, it's almost spring here in Finland. We barely have any snow left. Downside is that everything is melting, so that I'll get super wet and I need to spend extra time getting over it. But the poor guy deserves it. They have the chairs, but they forgot the coffee table. It does look super cozy. But these fence parts, what well, they're actually garden. So here people, when the snow melts away, come here and grow vegetables and all sorts of stuff. It's kind of cool for the community. One more bit of overkill is underrated. Shooting in 4K. Do you need 4K? No, you don't. Am I gonna deliver in 4K? No, I won't. So why shoot in 4K in that case? Well, in the case of the A7 III and many other cameras, the quality is better because 4K is 6K down sampled and when they shoot at 1080p they do some line skipping <laughs> So anyway, the 4K down sample to 1080 in post will look better and crisper and sharper than 1080 That's a one good reason already And the second one is cropping and reframing 
I'll be the camera operator and also the director and I've been writing the show. So I'm doing way too many things. I don't really know how to do any of them. So having the ability to reframe afterwards in post without losing resolution or quality, that's a massive bonus. So pointer for me, shoot everything, try to frame well, and in case of doubt, frame a little bit wider, so then you can crop afterwards. This would become very handy also if I would have to stabilize shots in post. If the software, what it does is then it will stabilize it, but to do that you will have to crop some bits or otherwise you will have some black bars either above or below or on the sides. And if you shoot 4K, deliver 1080, you can do that and not losing any quiet. So was it overkill? A pretty useful one if you ask me. Because the snow is melting, this is not growing and getting fuller and fuller. And that's the risk that it will happen like the last year. That the street, which is over there, gets flooded and that we can't leave our street. I'm not sure if he's enjoying this double very much, to be honest. Not that I'm very confident now with this talking to a camera being alone and outside. But at least I hope that not look as disgusted as I was in the very first time I did it. I did look also again from the camera conspiracies. He was suggesting on how to get used to this blogging business. And he said, go to a public place, go to a mall, there's plenty of people there. I almost followed his advice. Instead I moved to Finland. Ten years later I decided that maybe I could try. And not only Finland, but I'm in the suburbs of one of the most widespread cities in Finland. It's still a city. So today, in this half an hour, 45 minute walk, I met a total of three people. I can do it. See? I hear people, they are about 300 meters away from me, I'm freaking out already. So, the next time I do one of these dog vlogs, we would have already shot one of the first filming days of the Dealing With It upcoming short film. Hopefully I can give you an update. How it went. Did my overkill pay off. And I guess I'll see you soon. There might be an episode for this thing.